What if DJI quietly rewired the entire Avatar idea and dropped a drone that shoots everything around you in one flight? Today we're unpacking the Avatar 3 leaks, or maybe it will be called the Avatar 360. And I'll walk you through the timeline rumors, the headline specs, and the real question every pilot is asking. Should you wait or buy right now? Stick with me. The part about the camera options and how that changes your whole workflow is coming up, and it might be the reason you either upgrade or keep flying what you already have. Okay, first the big picture. The Avatar line has always been about approachable FPV compact, ducted, and forgiving. The Avatar 2 polished that formula. The Avatar 3 leaks suggest DJI wants to push past incremental tweaks. Think bigger sensor options, faster top speeds, longer flight times, and possibly a dual-lens 360 capture setup. Right now, the community is split. Some leakers describe a straight successor with a 1-inch sensor. Others show twin lenses and call it Avatar 360. Both scenarios change how you shoot and edit, so let's break down what each would actually mean for creators. If DJI goes with a 1-inch sensor, expect a meaningful jump in low light, dynamic range, and detail versus the Avatar 2. That's real for night or indoor work, where noise and highlight clipping matter. Now, if the Avatar 360 rumors are true and DJI mounts twin 1-inch sensors for spherical capture, that's a different game. Native 360 video, potential 8K spherical capture, and full reframing in post. But Aerial 360 introduces challenges, stitching, vibration damping, and heavier processing. Practical takeaway, a single large sensor gives better traditional FPV footage. A dual 360 rig gives creative freedom but raises workflow and hardware demands. Speed and handling rumors point toward redesigned propellers and a lighter, stiffer frame. Pilots are whispering 120 to 140 kilometers per hour in top builds. Longer flight time is claimed too, with batteries jumping into the 3,000 milliamp hour range and better power swapping. That could mean 25 to 30 minutes per flight in conservative use, which is huge for cinematic runs. But remember, real world flight times depend on payload, wind, and whether you're recording 8K spherical or standard 4K. If you plan to fly 360 capture, expect reduced runtime compared to a photo only setup. Another critical piece sensing. Leaks mention multi direction obstacle sensing and smarter tracking for 360 awareness. If true, DJI would be solving a core problem with spherical airborne capture. You're recording in every direction, so collision avoidance matters more than ever. Also, regulatory issues could affect availability in certain regions, especially if governments flag data or transmission concerns. That's not new, but it might influence launch timing or whether certain versions ship globally. If you fly commercially, keep an eye on local rules before upgrading. Here's my short answer. If you need reliable FPV performance today and the Avatar 2 does what you need, there's no urgent reason to panic buy. If you value low light and cleaner image quality and the one inch sensor leaks are accurate, waiting could be worth it. If you're a spherical or VR creator and the Avatar 360 arrives with usable 8K stitch and stable workflow, that could be transformative, but be ready for heavy file sizes and new editing demands. My gut, DJI will ship something compelling in late 2025 or early 2026, but expect region-specific availability and at least one variant aimed at creators who want 360 capture. So which side are you on? A faster, cleaner Avatar 3 or a daring Avatar 360 that records everything and asks you to rethink editing? Drop your take in the comments. 
What if DJ, I just quietly made the pocket truly pocketable again? Today we're unpacking the pocket 4 leaks and chassis shots to figure out what actually changed, what matters, and whether this is the compact vlogging upgrade you should care about. I'll cover the new body and buttons, the screen and control quirks, the likely camera and zoom improvements, battery and audio changes, and whether the Pocket 4 still beats Insta and GoPro for storytellers on the move. Stick around. The little mystery about those extra buttons is the part that tells you what DJI is trying to fix. Put the Pocket 4 next to the Pocket 3 and the DNA is obvious, but DJI didn't just iterate, they refined. The new chassis is slightly taller, noticeably slimmer, and drops down to roughly 116 grams from the Pocket 3's 179 grams. That weight cut is huge for handheld shooting and travel packing. The curious part is the extra buttons on the front. Two more physical buttons may sound trivial, but think about what they could be dedicated zoom control, quick custom shortcuts, or instant mode switches. If DJI gives us tactile zoom steps instead of the clumsy digital pinch, that solves one of the Pocket 3's biggest usability complaints. Later, we'll talk about how those buttons might change vlog workflows. The display cutout appears unchanged, so expect the same rotatable 2-inch rear screen that made the series popular. That screen is the Pocket's secret weapon for selfie framing and quick monitoring. Oddly, the new front buttons slide under the panel in vertical mode, which raises questions about ergonomics and control mapping. Will DJI remap those buttons when you flip to portrait, or are they landscape-only features? Either way, the familiar grip shape remains, but the slimmer profile and lighter weight should make long handheld sessions less tiring. Trust me, when you're shooting all day, 100 grams feels like a world of difference. Leaks don't show the sensor yet, but industry chatter points to improved crop zoom and smarter processing rather than a bigger sensor. If DJI keeps a 1-inch sensor and refines the optical path and the digital zoom, we could get cleaner telephoto shots without the usual artifacting. There are whispers of two variants, a base skinny model and a pro model with a second lens and larger battery. That would make sense. One for casual vloggers who value size and price, another for creators who need extra reach and runtime. Pair better zoom with the pocket gimbal's natural motion, and DJI still owns a unique space that neither GoPro nor Insta easily replicate. A lighter body often means smarter power management, and the leaks suggest battery life improvements that could push usable shooting times substantially higher. Rumors hint at something in the multiple hours range for light use, which would make the Pocket 4 genuinely usable for day outings and travel vlogs. Another common Pocket 3 gripe was mic performance. On the Pocket 4, we're hearing about better built-in mic support and improved wind handling. If DJI nails onboard audio and gives clearer battery endurance, the Pocket 4 becomes a more complete solution for creators who do not want to carry extra mics and batteries. Price talk lands around seven to $800, which is not cheap, but it is squarely between smartphone video and a full kit camera. If DJI delivers meaningful upgrades in control, zoom quality, low light, and audio, the cost is reasonable for creators who value convenience, gimbal stabilization, and fast outputs. Compared to Insta's modular approach and GoPro's action focus, the pocket line still wins for natural cinematic handheld motion and one-handed storytelling. So, is it worth the upgrade? If you value better zoom control, lighter carry, and cleaner audio out of the box, Yes, especially if the Pro variant appears. If you only want one feature, which would you pick? Zoom, low light, or log recording? Production looks real, the chassis is real, and the direction is clear. Smaller, smarter, more usable. Tell me which Pocket 4 rumor you want confirmed first. 
physical zoom control, a second lens, or longer battery life? Drop it in the comments. If this helped, like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you do not miss the spec deep dive when DJI finally announces it.